Basically, they're- I just can't seem to get over it. The sheer weight of them in my hands. Their softness even through a layer of clothing. Their springiness as they pushed back against my fingertips. I mean, I was the one who was grabbing them, but it's as if they were clinging to my hands. <laughs> that hurt. I've had just about enough of you reviewing my breasts. How long are you going to keep obsessing over that anyway? And that's not even touching on how weird it is that you were shocked in the first place. I'm not trying to gloat here, but it's not exactly a secret how big they are. Hello everybody, Megazord X here, back at it again to give you another very exciting video and for today I'm going to be reviewing a certain scientific railgun tee episode 21 called Doppelganger. If you hadn't already done so, you can go ahead and click that card in the corner and check out my episode 20 review if you hadn't been able to watch that one yet and then bounce back over and watch this one though, but man I gotta say with this one, <laughs> bruh, like literally there were some really good comedic effects and it, that, that one moment as you saw um, previously uh, with the clip I showed at the beginning, oh shoot, <laughs> the interactions between um, Shokuho and Misaka, man that stuff is real to a T. Like, uh, no, you know, no pun intended right there, though. But, I, I mean, my goodness. Like, the way how they had some of those comedic effects in there, that was pretty cool, though. But then getting to the real plot of the story, man, the... the oh, gosh, this zebra girl, though. And I'm like, like, what the heck? Like, this whole entire thing, like, two souls and the cyborg-related things and cutting the human in half and merging with cyborg. Like, like, bro, like, I, I was not expecting anything like this to be the main content of this whole entire arc. And I was like, I was like, dang. I was like, this is some weird kind of little freaky little next-level stuff, though. But, um... There's quite a bit of stuff to say about this thing though, so let's go ahead and get up into it though. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight up into this episode review of a certain scientific railgun tea. With this episode, the timeline has advanced to October 12th, a fact that the episode reinforces by conspicuously showing the date twice. That means that all previous events in this arc and the entirety of the Battle Royale arc in uh, A Magical Index Season 3 between Episodes 4 and 6 have been completed, with Uriharu's arm still in the sling being the most visual lingering evidence of the latter. That also means that the Accua of the Black Arc has likely not begun yet and it is vaguely dated as mid-October-ish. Which is important because that means that Misaka is not yet distracted by learning about Toma's memory loss. Hence, she can focus entirely on the events of her own art, and as this episode shows, she's definitely is going to have some things to focus on here. Of course, that assumes that she at least temporarily gets over having a complex about her chest size. It doesn't help that Kana you know, the bad girl whom Makoto has, you know, ran into a few times before in the first series, you know, the level upper arc, and in the second series being the sisters arc, and briefly during the Dahase Festival arc in the series, shows up again and again. And at Shoko's direction, skewers Misaka over the issue, or that Misaka makes the mistake of groping Shokoho as it just drives her to great despair. But while Shoko is not above teasing Misaka over her size, she isn't, you know, classless enough to approach Misaka just for that one reason though. After all, she needs a muscle head to help her get to the girl behind the Indian poker phenomenon. Ryoko Kuriba, the zebra-haired girl from, you know, Misaka saw in that one dream provided by one of the cards. And given her action-oriented inclination, Misaka does kind of qualify as a muscle head. Academy City has some sick and twisted things going on in its dark underbelly. But as determined experiments ago, this one ranks high up on the list. Cutting a girl up, making two different cyborgs out of the parts, and then recombining the girl's pieces into one body and the automated parts into another, never mind technical impossibility or the other lack of ethics, both of which are on par for the course for Academy City, that's just flagrantly wrong. Even if it's nominally for the purpose of testing compatibility of cyborg components. Soul generation as a possible side effect also has some scary possibilities, but I have to wonder if this is a true new soul or just a case of split personality. 
either way, I hope that this arc's remaining episodes delve into this a little bit further. Among other observations, the end of the episode introduces Scavengers, the dark side team, who first appeared in a certain scientific accelerator, were actually shown off within the, you know, the second opening. So it was just a matter of time until they popped up, but it seems doubtful that their efforts against a different level 5 will go any better. Midori, the liquid metal puppet user, also pops up again from the series' first arc, though since she is just relaying information, she does not seem likely to get involved any further than that. This episode also ups the fan service quotient, you know, considerably. I mean, shoot, they, they already got it going off good with um with Misaka and Shoko at the very beginning. But why is, you know, the zebrahead girl's skin two different shades just from being on two different bodies. I guess they wanted to kind of showcase off, you know, you know, what parts of her could have been associated with one side whenever she was split with the cyborg and then the other side. I guess you can sort of kind of just think about it as like a super tan body as some of her parts and then something and then the lighter color skin parts is just like her original self. Maybe that's the whole distinction of what they're trying to aim for right there, though. But some intriguing ideas are afloat here, including how the robot version of Ryoko so imagines herself as human that she interprets her reality in those terms. So this is a promising foundation for the remainder of this arc. And that is all I basically have to say about this episode, though. So finally, after goodness, after, you know, one episode that was focused on Misaka, a second episode that was focused purely on Kuroko, and then two episodes that was, you know, with two co-people being Sotten as well as Brenda, we finally get to the main meat and potatoes of this. It almost took, it took us like four episodes to kind of get here though, but they were sort of kind of laying down the foundation with the concept of Indian poker here and there, and then it finally led all of this main point. So between this episode being episode 21, and then the last few remaining episodes that we have left going to the conclusion of this series, now we're down to the meat and potatoes, and we just really want to see how this arc plays out, though. But they 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 really hit on some interesting but yet touchy subjects. Literally splitting a human in half and um, cutting them up, merging them with cyborgs, and with the thought of the possibility of creating new souls. I mean, Academy City has done some whack stuff, but this might certainly take the piece of cake um, in terms of the crazy amount of crap that's going on within this city though but y'all gotta let me know down in the comment section down below what all did you think about this episode as a whole and what are you most curious about seeing how things should play out or the way you want them to play out for the rest of this art though make sure to leave those thoughts in the comment section down below though and that's basically all i have to say about this review though so if you really like this review go ahead and hit that like button go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things a certain scientific real gun tea that's happening this season y'all so remember, until whatever video I make next, see y'all. Okay. <laughs> Did they know I was coming? <laughs>